I'm Shannon. And I'm Lisa. And you're listening to Black Tivities. A celebration of all things Black. Black culture, Black history, Black perspectives, and Black panache. Celebrating our Blackness doesn't mean exclusion. Everybody's invited, but you gotta come in and have a seat. So, so let, let the, the Black Tivities begin. All right, welcome back to Black Tivities. Are you returning with myself, Talisa, actually known as Mona Lisa the Poet, and then the lovely, lovely Miss Shannon. Welcome to episode two of A Celebration of Something Great with a Side of Positivity and a Dash of Panache. Remember, you're here to celebrate every other Thursday. We're back with a new episode. Okay, so Shannon, real quick, I have a title of this episode. I want to title this hair activities. Okay. So I feel like this is really, really fitting considering something recently that happened to one of my children. I am a mother of three and um, I have to say I have history. Okay. When it comes to hair, doing my own hair when I was younger, I had girls, you know, used to ride the bus home and I would put box braids in their hair when I was 12. So you would think that I was a master Okay, a cosmetology master when it comes to hair. Mm, No, not this time. (laughs) My youngest daughter, we decided that we was going to do something a little different. We're going to shake it up. I decided to braid her hair up. And instead of letting her natural hair just be free, I decided that, hey, I'm going to buy one of these little fake poom poom balls to sit at the top. You know, kind of cheating a little bit because that's what we do. You know, I go ahead and do her hair the night before. The next day, I'm thinking, okay, I have successfully conquered and mastered her hair. I go on with my regular work day. I go and pick her up, okay? She gets in the car and she is highly upset with me. You want to know why she's highly upset with me? She informed me that she was playing in gym and she felt something brush the back of her neck. And she was like, wait a minute, what was that? And she looked down and the poom poom ball, the Afro ball was laying on the ground in the middle of the gym. Oh, no. The school she goes to, there there was African-Americans sprinkled throughout the school. It's not a whole big, you know, it's just sprinkled. Okay. So I was like, oh, my God. Like, what did you do? She said, Mama, I picked it up off the floor. I put it up under my shirt and I just ran out the gym. I ain't asked nobody to go. I didn't ask for permission. I just ran. And I was just like, where did you go? She said, I went to the bathroom. And I don't know, somehow she ended up at the at the school nurse. Okay. Now this was an emergency to where she's like, I gotta go to the school nurse. <laughs> she said that the school nurse who is Caucasian put it back on and pinned it. Okay. She pinned it back on there. And I sat there in disbelief. Like, oh my God, one, I did my baby like this. I did her dirty. I didn't secure the bun, <laughs> first of all. But two, someone that night, she was able to fix my baby. She saw my baby in distress <laughs> and she was able to assist her. So I want to do a round of applause for that, for her, you know, assisting my baby. Yes, yes. Most definitely. Yes, because yes. I embarrassed. I embarrassed the shit out of my child. <laughs> okay. Poe baby. Yeah, Poe baby. I, I feel so bad when it comes to that. So when you have situations like this, and I know that I'm not the only person that have been in, you know, an embarrassing situation. Everyone has had their embarrassing hair story. It just comes with the territory. And as crazy as it is, as it is um, we still have to embrace <laughs> This hair, this history, and this freest choice of hair activities, which brings us to... Sex Facts. Yes. Well, before we do Sex Facts, Talisa, I have to applaud you for being a mom of three girls. Because (laughs) I can tell you this, I have one girl, and trying to do her hair, I feel like I need a drink. Like, it's... It's a lot. Look, it's going to get worse, but then it's going to get better and they're going to appreciate it. So you got this. Okay, well, I'll just (laughs) stay tuned then. All right. Sex facts. (laughs) 
If you don't know, you should. Our hair has been one of our prized and distinct characteristics since we were still in the motherland. Before they brought us here, our hair said a lot about our identity. You could tell who had the juice and who folks repped by their hairstyles. You could tell who was going to war and who was in mourning all by their hair. Some even believed that hair was spiritual and brought them closer to God. Our hair is part of our flair, then and now. And people have been trying to dim our light since they brought our ancestors to this country and cut off their precious hair and enslaved them. In 1786, in Louisiana, they passed laws called Tian laws. And it probably sounds different when I say it with my country accent, but that made us cover our hair because it became a threat to white women's security when they saw our beauty was catching the eyes of their men. But what did we do? We showed them that we are a whole mood by throwing our flair into those head wraps. We owned it and we still turned heads. When Louisiana became part of the U.S. in 1803, those laws went away, but we continued to wear our head wraps as a way to fight the powers that be. Post-slavery in the 19th century, society said that if we wanted to be beautiful, we needed to straighten our hair. We started using chemicals and hot combs to do just that, and we owned it like we've done for centuries. But in the 60s and 70s, we said, we ain't going. Y'all finna get these froze, and we finna get these rights. And once again, our hair became part of the protest. Meanwhile, our Marcus Garvey-inspired Rastafarian friends in Jamaica started wearing dreadlocks in the 1930s as a part of a belief that the hair should not be cut. Today, we're still working that panache with our hair, Black hair is a multi-billion dollar industry. Some of us have gotten off the creamy crack. And don't do that. Some of us. Some of us. (laughs) And we're still wearing our hair any way we want to. Long, short, fro, kinks, locks, wigs, weaves, all different colors. Hair is still a huge mode of expression in the black community. And that's Sax Facts. All right, I love it. I love it. In the beginning, you said your hair, it it, it represents us. What would you say your hair right now say about you? Uh, right now, I think my hair says I-D-G-A-F. Okay. 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 <laughs> um, but with you, I think with your hair the way it is, and if I don't know if y'all seen her, her hair is short and she got it dyed. Oh my God, I'm in love with this color that she has on there. I think it it, it does. It says that. But it shows, again, you're strong and the natural thing. It just, with me, yes, I do have a relaxer. I'm obsessed with the edges, but I know if I go natural, I'm going to have to, I'm lazy. I'm going to have to like try to figure out my whole (laughs) edge game. (laughs) Because I like it swooped and stuff. Like You like a swoop? Yeah, swoop. I think if I had to... I'd be like, I'm on like a Josephine Baker type thing right now with the shorts. Okay, okay, I got you. So that that's like that's the thing, but I know I wouldn't be able to achieve that look with you know what I'm saying with with the natural. So I mean, I had a really big fro, and I love my really big fro, but mm-hmm. I don't know how to do hair that great. So like, I would just wet it, put some product in there, and just kind of like poof it out. And that would be it. But then when I wake up, it's like smushed to the side of my head. Mm-hmm. I have to applaud people with natural hair, though. It's funny that we growing up, they say, OK, your hair, her hair is nappy. And they say that they, they point it out as being lazy. Mm-hmm. But 
my older two children, they're 20 and 16, and I sit and I watch them, the amount of money that they spend on hair products, what it takes, like their process for his wash day, yo, that's hours. Like I applaud them. Oh yeah. And it's like, I remember, you know, when they were younger doing their hair, like I was sitting here, man, my hand cramped up and I had to do both of their hair back to back. Sundays was the wash day, you know? So I have to applaud it. it it's more than less when it comes to lazy people with the relaxing stuff, that's lazy. No, no. People with natural hair, I give y'all the emoji, <laughs> the, the strong arm emoji. <laughs> I have to because it's amazing. It is so amazing. My baby girl, she has an awesome curl pattern, mm-hmm. but it also gets tangled because she is four and she just refuses to keep the bonnet on at night. But yeah, it takes hours to wash and do her hair. Mm-hmm. And all the while, she's like, ew, mom, it hurts. <laughs> With head wraps and the braids and the crowns and like the shells we was used to put in the hair and to kind of like represent us, what place does the wigs and the lace fronts represent today? Is, is it a strong like statement as the head wraps and, you know, the shells on the end of the bees is it dreadlocks. Is it, does it give the same message in your opinion? I don't know. I think wigs and weaves and lace fronts, like, I think it's kind of just another statement of our creativity because it's like the possibilities for the way we do our hair are like endless. Cause even mm-hmm. now, like my hair is short and you would think, okay, well, she can't do much with it. But, you know, I might come in with long hair one day. Let me t- let me tell you, baby, if y'all know where I work at, don't like me and where I work at, baby. They love it when I come in. I'll be short one day, holla berry, and the next day it'd be long to my butt. <laughs> they, they come peeping at me. It's cool. But I, I, I totally agree with you. I do agree with you for it's like switching it up. Just don't come asking me, is that my real hair? Right. Because I'm going to give you the side eye. You know it ain't. Like, ugh. What about the trend of men getting lace fronts? No, nah, I don't know about that. <laughs> I don't know about that. Could you? Could you? Th- that, that's what we need to ask people. Ask women. Could you go on a date with the man that you know has a lace front on his head or beard? They even doing the beard joints. I've seen the videos. I just uh, don't tell me. <laughs> I don't want to know. What if, what if like, okay, I know you're married, but let's just say, okay, for women out there, what if you're like out on a date and a dude that has a lace for has an embarrassing moment like my child did? Like, what would you say? Would you say, oh, would you help him out? And be like, yo, your beard coming up. You know what I mean? Or, <laughs> <laughs> like, what would you do? Like, would you? Mash his edges down, like, cause the glue coming up. Like, what would you help? Oh no! We need to ask. We need to ask so they can. Yeah, we gonna we gonna we gonna open it up so we can. We gonna have to take that to social media. Yes, yes, cause that right there, I don't know. It would throw me for a loop. It, it, it would really me would. too, cause I wouldn't be expecting it. Right, right. So I'm gonna ask you a question: When it comes to perms versus being natural, in your opinion, before I share. What do you think men's preference is? Hmm. I don't know because I feel like a lot of men are embracing the natural styles. Mm -hmm. I feel like a lot of men like that exotic look. And so they go for these women that wear the long lace fronts and stuff. Mm -hmm. So Mm -hmm. I don't know. I asked a couple men, do they prefer nappy, natural, or straight hair? Now, I did have one gentleman correct me. He said, now, baby, it ain't nothing nappy. Mm. He said, you could use the term natural, but it ain't nothing nappy. I said, I clutch my pearls. I said, okay, <laughs> okay, cat daddy, where we going? You know what I mean? <laughs> but this is what he said. He said, I'm not sure where this falls, but... First, I like a woman with clean hair. Okay. And I was like, okay. He said, 
if it's natural, straight, it really don't matter. He said, I like her scalp to smell good. And as long as she's presentable, she is totally my type. Long as she makes it work for her. And I was like, okay. Yeah. Okay. I can hear that. Okay. Okay. You just want her to be clean. Right. Now, another gentleman said, I prefer natural. I think it is very sexy for a woman to have a fro. And I was like, okay. Another guy said he prefers natural. Now, I purposely asked the gentleman who is not African-American his preference. Okay. And he said he prefers straight hair. Okay. I don't want to say that's to be expected, but now this character, this is the one that corrected me. (laughs) And I hope that we can get him on because he is very hilarious. His TikTok is booming. He said that I don't like to use the term nappy when talking about women or black people in general. I would say textured or coarse hair. I love when women hair is natural, the froze, the natural hair entices me. He was like, however you say it, but that's my thing. Okay. So team natural. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'm still getting a relax. I don't care what y'all say. <laughs> I ain't now one of them paying my bills. <laughs> the men that I asked, they natural is the thing. But my thing is when you see like rap videos or like men, like they don't, you don't see natural women out there. If if I'm wrong, correct me. But you always see the lace fronts and the straight hair. Like that's that's what you see. Mm-hmm. You know, on my eyelashes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but some of y'all taking it too far with them eyelashes, but that's a different Yeah, that's a different no, I was gonna <laughs> do it. I said no. Anyway, I was happy to, you know. Ask these men their opinions. And it, it really did. It, it shocked me to hear that men really prefer women with natural hair. It intrigued me. Like, okay, maybe I should kind of like try it out. But I'm scared. I'm going to cut mine off. My head going to be shaped funny. Like, you know how you get the peanut m M&M. and It won't. Your hair's already short. It won't. All right. What do you think about, I know you had brought this up to me, hairstyles that are renamed and rebranded. Like boxer braids? Yes. The Kim Kardashian braids. I said I wasn't going to say her name. Them is not her braids. <laughs> We've been doing that. Right, right. I look at that like the two braids to the back. That's when your granny didn't feel like doing it. Your mama done dropped you off at your <laughs> granny house. like, come here, get that comb. And she know the Vaseline and she parted in the middle and braid two braids to the back. You outside and play. Kimberly was nowhere around then. I got no words for that. <laughs> I I, no words. <laughs> so how about this? Let's do a little trivia. So let's see if you are up on your activities. Again, this is just a couple. All right. First off, how can we talk about hair without mentioning first millionaire, Madam C.J. Walker, African-American entrepreneur, activist, philanthropist? Did she create the hot comb? True or false? She did. Did she create it? Yeah, people say she did. I don't think she did, though. Yep, that is true. People give her credit for creating a hot comb, and she didn't. Now, she may have took the idea and ran with it and threw some other stuff with it, but no, she did not create the hot comb. Four is that devil hot comb that killed me mostly on Easter's. It was created by a French woman in the late 1800s by the name of Marcel Gratul. I think that's how you say her name. Every little black girl can smell that hot comb and the Mm -hmm. burnt. Let me tell you, we 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 get like shell shot. Like if we hear a sizzle, <laughs> we just like you, we kind of like move our head off. Like ah, you know, it don't be nothing. Yep. It'd be like a it could be like a gnat or something. All right, true or false? You can still find Madam C J Walker hair products in stores today. I'm gonna say that's true. Yes, ma'am, that is true. You can find these products mostly online. At Amazon, obviously, they have everything. It's the portal of everything. Mm -hmm. Walmart. And supposedly Sephora carries some things, too. I'm going to go research that. Okay, that one's surprising. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go research that. All right. One more. True or false? Shea Moisture and Carol's Daughter is Black-owned. Just based off the fact that there are a lot of companies that are Black-started, but then they Mm -hmm. give... 
bought by look at you other companies i'm gonna say no that that's the, that's right so okay and Cantu, Cantu also no okay. longer black owned nope 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 and i think that's fascinating that i mean would you start a business and like is there a dollar sign on you that you could just be like you know what i'm done absolutely okay well boom there you have it buy me out <laughs> I'll have to like still put in a contract because it's your vision, you know, put in a contract like you can't make any changes. Like don't don't go out the way. That part would be hard. But then when you have your millions and Mm -hmm. you sitting out on the beach, you might not care that much. Yeah, that kind of does like trump it all. I think it's time for Mona Lisa's pieces. the title this piece that I wrote Heritivities so just just come come vibe with me smiling from ear to ear grin just as big as the Nile smirk on how the changing appearance have their curiosity coiled around hostile thoughts of melanin style influences random minds whatever compels you to do it well do it chin up forever confident He doesn't need hair for that. She doesn't either. Strong fist, crouching nigga. It's more than reciprocating the fro and the figure. The chemistry mixed up in a glass. Bunts and burner, then poof. The smoke clears and the swag's the winner. Pin him first. The fair has been won. And everyone agrees it was the one who was able to square up. No matter what, all eyes will never blink twice. They watching, so look your best at all times. No sweat, just continuous success. Marcus Garvey said, you must remove the kinks from your mind, but not your hair. Mona. All right. Yes. I love it. Yay. Thanks. Well... This party is coming to an end today, but let them know where they can continue to party. Come on out to the cookout. We're saving you a plate. It's already wrapped up. Uh, You can check the show notes for links to our Patreon, social media, the articles we use for Sax Facts, and to get your own Black Tivities and other merch. It's all in the show notes. Everything is there going to have some conversations going around this hair thing too because there's a lot more that we did not talk about today yes and we want to hear from y'all but until then kings and queens keep doing big things <laughs>